Now, my biggest gripe with this talking point from the West about China not having freedom of speech is how bad things are in the West when it comes to freedom of speech. We've all seen the situation in the UK. We have seen the Crown Prosecution Service tweeting on August 8th, thing before you post. Content that incites violence or hatred isn't just harmful, it can be illegal. And I know that I'm making that voice, but doesn't that sound like Chapter 2, Article 41 of the Chinese Constitution? Quite similar, no? <laughs> Knowing that I cannot express freely in Hong Kong or in the UK without risking other people in trouble. Now, when it comes to America, please hear me once and hear me always. Your sacred freedom of a speech is like throwing a bone to a dog to keep him distracted. Yes, you heard me. Your freedom to say, F the president, is your bone. Your freedom to chant at Kamala Harris to stop the genocide in Gaza that your taxes are paying for is the bone. Your freedom to express outrage at the fact that the list of clients in Ghislaine Maxwell's black book has been kept secret even after she is in prison. That's your bone. Your outrage at the lies from Fauci, outrage at Boeing, outrage at Pharma Bro, Martin Screlly, outrage at the faith of whistleblowers like Joe Darby and his CD of Abu Ghraib, or Chelsea Manning and her Guantanamo Bay documents and the WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks, sorry. Your millions and millions and millions of people marching, shouting, demanding to stop the wars that your dollars are paying for. And not a single freaking thing has changed. Nothing. Your freedom of speech is a bone. I guess you understand what that makes of you, right? But don't, 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 don't blame me the same way that I don't blame you. This is your free press. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More, More alarming, alarming, some media outlets publish the same things that are true without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. It's a press that is owned by a few companies that operate on a very simple scheme, divide and conquer. One company easily owns both left and right-leaning news agencies. One tells you that masks work. The other one tells you that masks don't work. One tells you that we can't tell what a woman is. And the other tells you that you can definitely tell what a woman is. How is this contradictory information useful? How is this a good exercise of the fourth state? All this accomplishes is division. And the fact is you will never reconcile under that scenario, not even to overthrow the powers that keep oppressing you with misinformation. If you do not know what is true, how are you expected to act? How are you expected to convince anyone to act together with you to overthrow this misinformation empires? Besides, whichever news channel bias you prefer to watch, they are all getting the ad revenue that they want because they're betting on red and black, or in this case, red and blue. But let us circle back very quickly to the original video from Chong Ching Kuang. She identified in that video as a Hong Kong dis dissident, right? She worked for Safeguard Defenders and wrote a report on alleged China's secret police stations around the world that she titled Patrol and Persuade. Safeguard Defenders was founded by a human rights activist and former Swedish government employee named Peter Darling. Okay, let's reel this fish in, okay? I hope you're ready for this. Peter Darling was arrested in China and held in prison for 23 days back in 2016 when he was on his way to the airport to catch a flight headed to Thailand. After a public confession of having violated Chinese law and caused harm to the Chinese people, he was then released and devoted. Now, after leaving China, he went on to found his NGO, which he called Safeguard Defenders, for which Ms. Tong wrote that report. Now, that report about the secret police stations around the world has been thoroughly debunked by a department of Yale Law School, the Paul Tsai China Center of Yale. Uh, there is a link in the description to that report. Um, 
it is there where Professor Jeremy Dom, um, where uh, he is a senior research scholar at this Yale Law um, College. And, and here's a short story, just so that you understand what uh, Mr. Dom, Professor Dom, found out. These are not secret, and they're not police stations. So we can move on. But please, do yourselves a favor, read Professor Dom's report for the full story. So we end up back with Mrs. Chong and her self-proclaimed HK dissident status. My question is, as a dissident from Hong Kong, as a person who defends and supports the terror that occurred for nearly two years in Hong Kong, a movement which started with a legitimate puzzling situation, here's, here's exactly what took place, very briefly, okay? A Hong Kong resident went to Taiwan where he killed his girlfriend. Then he chopped her up, put her in a suitcase and dumped her uh, the suitcase in a trash container before flying back to Hong Kong. He was later identified and Taiwan requested Hong Kong to extradite him to be judged in Taiwan. But there's no extradition treaty between Hong Kong and Taiwan, so they proposed, well, why don't we write one up? This is when mainland China stepped in and requested, because believe it or not, there is one country, two systems, there's still is no uh, extradition treaty between Hong Kong and the mainland. Um, not then, not now. So this is what happened. China said, OK, if you're going to have an extradition um, agreement with Taiwan, we should also have one. And at that moment, criminals in Hong Kong who had fled mainland and many others with legitimate concerns about, well, thinking that this was an infringement into the, the original agreement, took to the streets to protest. Unfortunately, that movement was soon kidnapped by U.S. intelligence teams that were on the ground and they started a color revolution with violence and destruction like I had never seen. Actual terrorism. You, you knew that the local people were afraid to go out or terrorize. They stayed in their rooms, they stayed in their homes because they were afraid of going out. You can see here in these clips and photos, CIA organizers leading a meeting Hong Kong uh, youth that were supposed to be democracy fighters. Now Beijing in a true, true exercise of one country, two systems did not intervene militarily. The PLA was at the border, but they never went in. They only went in to help with the cleanup after there were some um, destruction and, and things like that, but never to actually engage with the protesters. They simply let Hong Kong deal with the situation through legislation, and then the national security law was passed, which put an end to the violence, the terror, and this whole movement, and effectively managed to kick out of Hong Kong all these U.S. intelligence agents and the Stooges, some of them, unfortunately for them, <laughs> fortunately for us, were caught and are now in prison, but a lot of them are out there in the UK and causing trouble online trying to make China look bad. So this is who Ms. Chong identifies and defends. But let us talk about her question, and this is the last part of this video. It's already quite long, I promise. In her question to Mr. Gao, Victor Gao, who is the vice president of the, of the Center for China and Globalization, and he's a member of the Beijing Municipal Committee of the Revolutionary Committee of the Chinese Kuomintang. This is, again, one of the other eight political parties in China. To remember, watch my last video. There are other parties in China. And he's actually most famous for having been the, the former translator for Deng Xiaoping, who's one of the fathers of modern China. So this lady asked Mr. Gao to share criticism of Xi Jinping, or at least to acknowledge that Xi Jinping resembles Winnie the Pooh, as proof that there is, in fact, freedom of speech in China. As you saw in the video, Mr. Gao expresses criticism about the government and some of the actions that they have taken, as any opposition party with a different opinion about what the government is doing would do. Because here's the thing, these people are saying that because he did not say the name Xi Jinping, he is not a criticism of Xi Jinping. Ms. Chong asks him, okay, but does that mean that Xi Jinping directly decides these things? And Mr. Gao replied, look, it's all the government. He represents the government. These haters, uh, they're now saying that because 
Mr. Gao's answer did not prove there was freedom of speech because he didn't use the name Xi Jinping. According to them, the government is not represented by Xi Jinping. He is not the head of the government. But the most embarrassing thing is the request to insult Xi Jinping by saying that he looks like Winnie the Pooh. It's absolute sophistry. They, they think that that demonstrates freedom of speech. That's how low the bar is. Explain to me how chanting Let's Go Brandon changes what America is doing through Israel in Gaza. How does that change anything? Here's one last thing that I want to say before we end this video. Censorship in China is about keeping harmony. Please understand one thing. On the reruns of the CCTV, um, uh, the reruns of the opening show of the Paris Olympics, CCTV, the Chinese state media, they cut the parts of the opening show that they thought were not okay, were not suitable for children, the ones that they did not approve of. Censorship is about drawing lines. And here's the thing, no matter where you draw the line, part of the population will think, oh, it's too much. And then others will think, oh, no, it's too little. And yet others will think that it's just absolutely fair and right and right down the middle. But there is one thing that nobody can argue against. Freedom of speech is very different from freedom to slander. If you're American and you disagree with me, please do get in touch with me in the comment sections because I will reply to you. But only comment after your freedom of speech has managed to stop the genocide in Gaza. Let's see how that works. All right, friends, thank you very much for watching again. See you again tomorrow in another video. And uh, you know what to do. If you like this kind of content, then make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out. And if you want to support the work that I do, make sure to hit the link in the description to buy me a cup of coffee. Thank you all so much for doing that, those of you who have done it in the past. If you're in China and use WeChat, there's a QR code on the screen that you can use to do exactly the same. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.